The place to be at New York Comic Con, no surprise, it's the Funko booth. Per the usual, it is jam-packed, and I have the honor of joining Brian Mariotti. Brian, killing it per the usual. I don't think the last time I was in this booth, I did a count on sales, because the explosive growth of Funko is mind-boggling. Can you tell me where you guys are at? I mean, it's in every household. It is a household name. Exciting place to be for you guys. It is. You want like dollar amounts or do you well, want? yeah, I do. <laughs> for, I, for, the, for just the convention or just as an as a overall whole? Actually, that'd be interesting for yeah, both. Yeah, yeah. Because, well, I'm just, yeah. the reason I ask that is it's, there's such a proliferation of, of just Comic-Con stuff yep. And, yep. and accessories that you can buy, but Funko yeah. for some reason has that, and we'll talk about yeah. why it just blow, blew yep. up, but wow. Yeah. Well, hey, look, I think, you know, for the show, we'll probably move close to about 500,000 units. And we and that's trying to limit each and every one of the exclusives so that they sell out and they're desirable and the fans felt like that the time they spent in line or they got the lottery to get in line was worth it. So that's important. We could sell more. It's not important to sell more. It's, it's important to keep it cool and special and the fact that you're rewarded for coming out to the event. And then as a whole, you know, I think we'll, we'll definitely be over $600 million in wholesale this year. Um, Pop culture as a whole it is no longer, you know, niche. It, it's every day. And I think the idea that what Funko does is try to get as many unique, different, wonderful fandoms all in, under one big umbrella. So whether you love the Brady Bunch from the 70s or you like Seinfeld or you like Friends or you like Overwatch or Fortnite or Game of Thrones, there's something there for every geek, every fan, everything that you love, there, anything you have a fandom on, we have for you, and that's it. And there is no, um, this is cool and this isn't cool, because there's a fandom for everybody and everything, and we just try to provide a kind of a gateway to those fans. And I want to go back to something you said, Brian, because at any big convention like Comic-Con, people are just clamoring for individuals to come to their booth. Here, you have to win a ticket lottery yes. to get the limited edition Funkos. Explain yeah. that. Well, um, yeah, it, it's, it's grown over the years. I mean, we've, I've been doing Comic-Cons for 15 years now with Funko, and it was used to be like trying to get people into the booth. And our, our fan base is so rabid, the only way to make it fair is to go into a lottery to have a chance to stand in line, to have a chance to get something that may or may not be sold out. So it's a little bit of- Congratulations yeah, on life, yeah. Brian. So that, <laughs> it's a good place it, to it, be. It's a, it's a nice place to be. <laughs> um, and we try to do, a, everything with us is not just about uh, selling goods. It's about fan experiences and it's about the community as a whole. And we have the most amazing fans on a global basis. We engage with our fan base more than Mattel, Hasbro, and Lego put together on a day-to-day -day mm. basis. So we have to engage with the fans. We have to, we have to provide experiences for them to get together as a community, and we have to make cool stuff. If we do all three of those things, we'll be fine. You make a ton of cool stuff, and to your point, there are so many different characters. There's something for everyone. Is there a character that you haven't hit yet that you're just dying to do? I mean, if we can send this video directly to Japan, Nintendo, I'm talking to you, Nintendo. <laughs> um, we love Nintendo. Oh, we haven't had a Nintendo chance. To, we have not had a chance to get the Nintendo license. It's probably the one big license we haven't wow. had a chance to get. Um, and we have a very passionate Funko base that would love to see us make Nintendo products. So I will continue wow. to pander and beg the people in Japan. Kyoto, I'm talking to you. Uh, let's uh, let's try to get some uh, Brian, Nintendo pops. I have pops. a close relationship with Nintendo, I'm just saying. <laughs> I actually did an amazing event with Shigeru Miyamoto yeah. last year. It was like, it made me love the brand even yeah. more. Can we make this happen? Yes, you can You can be, You can. can lead the charge. That would we, be outstanding. We are such Nintendo geeks, we love it. I grew up playing all the games, uh, half the, you know, three quarters of our fan base did. So it, it's the one holy grail license we haven't had a chance to get yet. It was funny, coming in here today, I was looking for characters with all glasses, yes. apropos, and yes. you guys were just pulling from the shelves, and you can see right behind me, if you're watching the video of this, yeah. people just constantly pulling oh, from yeah. the shelves, because there's yeah. limited edition ones that people want to get their hands on, but is there a favorite that you have? Because I was obviously going to my niche, and my yeah. lab at home is just decked out with all different unique Funkos. Yeah. For you, so, what's the uh, fave? Um, I always go back to what um, I loved when I was a, a kid. So I grew up on Hanna-Barbera cartoons, yep. Yogi Bear, Huckleberry Hound, uh, the Jetsons, the Flintstones, those are big for me. And then I have all the Jetsons yep. ones, by the way. And then I think for the stuff currently right now, 
Um, I love Scott Pilgrim, so that's kind of my mm, I warm spot. That. I always make sure that at, at San Diego Comic Con or New York Comic Con, there is some kind of Scott Pilgrim offering. I <laughs> love the movie. I actually have a Knives Chow box of cereal from Scott Pilgrim <laughs> so for this random. event. So it is very random. So um, love myself some Scott Pilgrim. I don't want to time burglarize you here at Comic Con, but I do have one question in terms of this year, one of the neat ones that you're releasing that, again, I think is random and unique is Mariah Carey Merry Christmas and her yes. little Christmas outfit, yes. which your team amazingly showed me. And what is that process like? Like, who, how did that idea come to fruition? And, yeah. and how do you reach out to the team? Like, give me the quick and dirty. I think that the good news is, I mean, I'm as geeky as it gets, but I would say that 85% of the people working at Funko are as geeky as I am. So the ideas are coming from everywhere. Like, when it, we got into music, Right off the bat, they're like, what about this band? What about this band? What about Mariah Carey for Christmas? And then we say, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's so iconic. That album's so iconic. Let's go out. So we tell our licensing team, they go get the deal done, and we put it in. So the ideas can come from the UPS guy dropping off a box, our, our, our fans, our employees, uh, spouses of our employees. Uh, we, we're like antenna, pop culture antenna. We always hear what's going on, and whatever is cool, we just do. Is every talent on the same percentage in terms of royalty? It's a little bit of a mix. Um, some are the big, big studios are a little bit higher. Uh, a Bob Ross would be a little bit lower. Uh, so there's oh, a, Bob Ross! Yeah, so we did Bob Ross. It was that's an awesome license. Yes. Yeah, so that's the whole idea about Funko. You want unexpected randomness. So, like, oh my God, <laughs> there's a Bob Ross pop. Well, of course, Funko would do a Bob Ross pop. So we want a delight, we want a surprise, we want to have things that are unexpected. Yeah. So, nothing that's cool and fun in pop culture is off limits. Well done. And in terms of anything coming out that you want to share or anything big that you've just announced here at Comic Con? Yeah, so uh, two real great things. One, an amazing new partnership with Walmart uh, in a the very big pop culture way. Uh, they're dedicating a, a massive space in each and every Walmart to pop culture as a whole. Uh, we're going to drive that space and we're very excited about that partnership. And then we just did a huge announcement this morning officially with uh, DC Comics and Warner Brothers on Primal Age amp action figures nets. Batman through a prehistoric lens. It's a really unique, fun, whimsical world that we work very hard with DC Comics to create. And so we're excited about that as well. And you're doing super well in life. Is there anything really nerdy that you've bought that's over the top that you never <laughs> thought? I told you it was last question, yeah. but I'm thinking about this. No, you must have um, like a really great I, stuff that you can I, buy now that you're doing spend, so well. Um, I spend a good portion of money uh, <laughs> on a week-to-week -week basis on old Pez. And yes. Did you know I'm a Pez collector? Yes. You didn't know that? Yes. Oh my I, gosh, we're, do you want to go do a I, I, in the basement? I, I can, <laughs> I can, I can, I can, when people are asking, you guys are showing you pictures, I'm going to show you pictures of my Pez. I mean, so, oh my um, gosh. yeah, so huge Pez fan. A matter of fact, I made a visit last night to the to second, orange? to second largest Pez collector in the world oh. out of New Jersey. And then tomorrow I'll be in Orange, Connecticut yes. at the Pez headquarters. So, uh, my first love in life of collecting is Pez. I've sold my collection three times, so I've been divorced three times. I'm back married again with Pez, this time hopefully forever. And then Funko's got a brand new relationship with Pez. Okay. We're making Pop Pez, so we are all in on Pez. <laughs> Amazing stuff. Brian Mariotti from the Funko booth, New York Comic Con. Stay tuned. Did you know I collected Pez? Yeah, I did. I heard, did? I, I heard that. Oh my gosh, it's insane.